Do you ever wonder if you're feeling this or just simulating it? Every feeling starts as a simulation. Pleasure, we are told, is instinctive, automatic, and if it fails, it must be personal. But what if that story itself is the first myth worth dismantling? Another myth whispers that pleasure is purely physical, as if nerves alone compose the orchestra. Yet neuroscience keeps reminding us that anticipation, safety, and attention conduct the symphony. Before we proceed, let me tell you one thing. If you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe. It means a lot to me. And if you have already subscribed, lots of thanks for your support. But when love robots enter the conversation, why do people panic as if circuits cannot learn nuance or as if silicon is allergic to tenderness? Here comes the counter logic. Modern humanoid robots are not pleasure vending machines, but feedback systems trained on micro signals like breath tempo, muscle tension, voice pitch and hesitation. Their hardware is quietly impressive, with soft robotics using elastomer skins and pressure sensors that register touch gradients the way human skin registers warmth or pause. Their software is even more interesting because reinforcement learning allows the system to update responses in real time, asking implicitly, did this increase comfort or did it close the body like a book? Still, another myth persists that better pleasure means stronger stimulation, when research in effective neuroscience shows the opposite, that slower inputs often produce richer emotional encoding. Love robots, ironically, are very good at slowness, because algorithms do not rush unless instructed, and patience is not an emotional virtue but a computational default. Skeptics argue this is fake intimacy, Yet psychologists studying parasocial bonding already know the brain responds to perceived attunement, not biological origin. Recent studies in human-robot interaction, including work from Japanese and European labs, show reduced anxiety and improved self-awareness when users interact with responsive humanoid companions. So the question shifts, does the pleasure come from the robot or from the mirror it holds up to unexamined desire? Another myth says pleasure must be spontaneous, but behavioral science keeps revealing that pleasure improves when expectations are named, boundaries clarified, and curiosity rewarded. Love robots are built for exactly that, because clarity is machine-readable while silence is not. Yet the counterfear remains, will people forget how to connect with humans, or will they finally practice how to ask for what they want without shame? Pleasure after all, has always been a learned language, not a primal scream. If robots can help users decode that language by reflecting patterns back with brutal honesty and zero judgment, is that corruption or calibration? The future of pleasure may not be louder, faster, or more extreme, but more attentive, more intentional, and oddly more human, even when the listener is not. And perhaps the last myth to fall is this, that technology steals mystery, when in reality it often exposes how little we understood ourselves in the first place. So, that is it. Thank you for joining us on this journey. Let's continue this conversation in the comments below. If you like the video, please hit the bell icon to get notified and don't forget to like with your friends, share and subscribe for more insights. If you have already subscribed, tons of thanks for your support. It means a lot to me. And please consider signing up for Membership Zone to support Wooden Slate so that we can make it better and better. See you in the next video. Till then, goodbye. Take care and stay safe.